says, hey, Thanksgiving's company coming. And isn't that cool? Happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody's ready for Thanksgiving. Um, if you ever have any question, any comment, any anything, send it to me in chat. And I'll be glad to stop and answer any questions you have. Keep checking our website for new webinars. Uh, we do design new ones all the time and do different ones all the time. And also, if you want your loan officers or anybody else uh, to hear these webinars, we do put them on uh, YouTube and we'll do one just specially for your uh, financial institution and no cost. Uh, and talk about what you want us to talk about and how, you know, your company may interpret certain data. So we'll go from there. But today we're going to talk about the lender check report, how to use it, interpret it, and how it's probably the most friendly environmental screen, the lender check in the U.S. It's easy to use. It's comprehensive. And uh, it checks the most databases of anybody in the nation, and we have all the databases in the nation. So if no one's got any questions right now, we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to try to work our way up from low to high. And you'll see what I mean by when I say low to high eventually. That is if I can find it. Here's a low one. So basically, this is our standard lender check report. It's really easy to get around. It has a low risk. It has a risk rating throughout the subject report. And the first thing I, you know, I'd want to know, right, is what I need to do because I have a risk level low. Well, that is inside the report, and it tells you exactly what you need to do. So, and what I mean by that is, well, if it's low, you probably don't need to do anything. But before you go ahead and review this report, one of the things I always do, because we have some clients who get five or ten of these a day, um, you want to check the site location and make sure you're on the report you want to be on. It's very important that you're on the correct report. So right here, we check the address. And you can see we're right on the proper report. The other thing is to start reviewing this. Um, you're going to want to go to uh, the the thing and open up what you see I just opened up. And those are the bookmarks. And the bookmarks will get you around the report really easily. Now, I have the newest version of <coughs> Windows Office here, so it's a little odd. I just uh, upgraded to it, but it still works real well. So let's uh, immediately go to. Remember, we just checked the address. Let's go to the 16th mile radius map. And here we can see the site's not listed, and there's nothing there. And the star is where the site is. So this is a, a super, super uh, 
low site, but when you go out on a quarter mile, you can also see there's no listings. Now, if there were listings, you would see listed sites here. And we probably should have done a high because then you'd see what we're looking at. But right away, you see your site isn't listed for anything because your site's where the star is. And right away, you see no listings because if there were listings, um, you would see it on this map. And here's out a mile. And again, there's still no listings on this site. So this is kind of uh, an example of when there's absolutely no listings, no databases on anything in this area, in the rural area outside of Waterloo. So you can see that this site's clean. There's no listing. And there's our actual site from the site location map. So right away, we're verifying that we're on the right location and where our site's at, and we know we're on the right report. So because this site is low, we really don't need to go any further. We can look at all the listings, and there are no listings. So we're going to do a high one after this so you can see the difference. And since... So potential risk to subject site is low, and then we tell you what your next step action is. There are no listed sites or none of the listed sites are known for potential contamination issues that are likely to have impacted the subject site. Action, no action required at this time. You really don't need to go further. And remember the key to the risk ratings is within the report right here. And you're gonna see the different risk ratings. But because this site is low, you could literally take this report, put it in a file, and you did your environmental due diligence. Now, if you suspect anything different from your site inspection, like we obviously right away saw that there's this kind of almost industrial looking site right next to our site. Well, I would peek over the fence, kind of nose around and see what that site's doing. And if you think there's a possibility that they handle hazardous materials, then you probably, uh, excuse me, have an environmental professional do a file review. It's an adjacent site. You don't necessarily need to do a full phase one, but you probably need to do a file review at the, excuse me, at the regulatory agencies to see if there's any listing. The other thing is this site's obviously been an agriculture. And so whether it's dry farming, row crops, whatever it is, uh, they could have used herbicides, insecticides, pesticides. And so if this site isn't going to be used as farmland or going to be potentially developed for residential or any kind of sensitive receptor, you probably ought to do a phase one and find out what herbicide, insecticide, and pesticides were used on this site. And you may have to do sampling. So this is a low site. These reports are really easy to get around. I'm going to go in more detail here in a minute, but by pulling up the bookmarks, you can get right to the executive summary. And again, you get a lot of information on the executive summary. So basically, the site's not listed, what quad it's in, the site elevation, 1,121 feet, flood zone, now, it's not a flood certificate, but it's very accurate. So you can definitely use it. It comes right from FEMA. Whether there's a radon issue, soil type, and occurrence count, which is a listing count. And no, doesn't have any of those things on it right now. So this site is, is very clean. We're feeling very comfortable that it's not a problem 
and there's no major environmental issues. So let's go ahead and go to total opposite. Let's go to a high site. Okay, this is a high site. So again, what we want to do is the first thing we want to do is we want to verify this is our site. So here's the address. The address is correct. The next thing we want to do is go to the 16th of a mile radius map. What do we see here? We see a red dot. A red dot is bad to the bone. We code red, yellow, green for all the listings, agency listings. Red is bad to the bone. Green is good. It's, it was a contaminated site and it's cleaned up. Or there's never been anything of issue on the site. Yellow is the agency did not provide us with enough information to determine whether it's a concern or not, or uh, whether it's an open or closed case. So let's go ahead and move up to the quarter mile map. We can either go here, and now here we see the yellow, green, and red, right? We have the three different colors. That's very important. So now we know our site's listed as one and it's listed as red, and there's really nothing real close to our site. All these issues are about a block away. But we're going to have a concern with our site, but I'm, I'm still not ready to go to it. <coughs> the details on that concern. The first thing I want to do now, I verified it is my site, but I want to go to the site location and look at that. And remember, all these things you can zoom in on. So I can zoom in on this and make sure that's my site location. That's interesting. It kind of looks like, I don't know, what do you think that looks like? A bank, a hospital, something, right? So right away, we know our site's listed as bad to the bone, right? So we need to find out why it's bad to the bone, but we want to do this in steps. So we're building an image of the site. This is how I would review this lender check. So the next thing is I'm going to go to the executive summary. Now I've zoomed in too much. I've got to zoom out a little bit. And here's the executive summary. Again, I see my coordinates, the site, historic tanks, lust, open. Oh my gosh, my site's listed with a historic lust site. That's not good, is it? You know what lust is? Leaking underground storage tank. So, if you don't know what lust is, you don't have to be an expert to find out. You can again go to the bookmarks, go down to the bottom, record search, search and we're going to look at historic tanks PA. So, where do we find historic tanks, PA? Historic lust. Wow. So, that's historically machine... Uh, historical confirmed releases. So, and you could click on here and go to the details. The details of this, see if it comes up. It may not because these are just samples. So, doesn't look like it's going to come up. Oh, there it is. So, it's the database contains confirmed releases from storage tanks in 1998 is reported by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. So this site had a historic release 
from a storage tank. And lust, <coughs> excuse me, is leaking underground storage tank. Well, I did really good and lost that report, but I will get it back. So if you just be a bit patient. Okay, so we got it back. So basically, our site had a historical um, underground leaking tank. And it's listing number one. So now, let's go ahead and go to the details, map ID one details. See where I'm highlighting in the left-hand column? Again, really easy to get around. And there we are. So there's our subject site listing. Historic tanks and lust open. And it's Falcon Beverage Company, Inc. at 1000 South Townsend Boulevard our subject site and no northeast eagle distributor so obviously they had underground storage tanks of you know fuel to supply their delivery trucks and they had a leaking underground storage tank so it says 31919 so that's this year Obvious diesel contamination in soil was discovered within the uncontained sump area. Soil. Not good, right? That's why it's a high risk. So, what is the recommendation for this? Well, The subject site is listed by a regulatory agency, and the action is have an environmental conduct company conduct a phase one ESA and or phase two ESA, period. So right away, when you get a high risk, we're not raising unnecessary red flags. We don't know if the site's been cleaned up. It's a recent spill. Someone needs to look at it, and you need to further question this site, and you really need to hire an environmental professional, unless you have one on staff, and they need to do conduct interviews, site inspection, review uh, agency files, and that kind of thing. So the lender check, really guides you. It screens every loan and lets you know where to go and what to look for. And if you end up hiring a environmental professional to look into this, you would give them a copy of this. And in a phase one, they should take off at least $74, the cost of this lender check, and use this in their phase one report as their database report. We insure it, we stand behind it, and there's no reason they shouldn't use it as long as it's current, and they should give you a break on the phase one. So make sure you note that. If anyone has a problem using our database report, 
you let me know and I'll talk to them and make sure they don't have a problem. Um, but that's how easy it is to get around and know what to do. So basically, you look at the cover page and it tells you exactly what you need to do, where you need to go. You know you got a high level. You go define the high level. It tells you what to do, and you do it, and it's that simple. There's, these are very, very easy to review and get around. So let's go look at a few other things on this site. Remember, we went to the 16th of a mile map. Whoops, this is the mile to a map. I clicked on the wrong thing. So these are all the sites listed around you. Rule of thumb, just rule of thumb, groundwater always travels to wherever it's least resistance. And so groundwater is going to travel this way, just like that. Very important to think about that. So these red listed sites aren't going to be a concern. The other thing which most people don't know is these are contour lines. See these contour lines on a USGS map? And this is a USGS map. That's 700 feet there. This is 800 feet. Everything goes down that way. So now, Let's look at detail number six because I want to show you something. So let's go down to detail number six. Also on the details, if you want to get a little more specific, right here. What's it say there? That map ID is 618 foot elevation, which is 68 feet lower than the subject site. And it's almost a half a mile away. So yes, groundwater does flow the way I just said, and it tells you. So every single detail listing gives you how many feet away it is of you. So let's go to detail two because that's the nearest site to your subject property, and it's 32 feet lower. So if we want to see where that actually is, we can click on the map number, and there's number two, and it's 32 feet lower. So it's not going to contaminate our site in any way, shape, or form. So really, the only issue on this site, and what makes this site high, is it's had a leaking underground storage tank, and we don't know that if it's cleared up or not, and if it was remediated properly. And since it just happened this year, 3-19-19, it probably hasn't been cleared up, and you probably need to do full phase one. But hand this over to an environmental professional and let them determine. If you don't have an environmental professional in the area, call us up. We'll recommend somebody. We have environmental professionals who we've worked with for years that use our products all over the United States, and we'd be glad to give you a couple recommendations, and then you can talk to them yourself and make your decision. So... High is bad. Red is bad to the bone. We just proved it, right? So now let's look at something that kind of sits on the fence. Anyone have any questions on this high one? These lender check reports are the most user-friendly and easiest. Remember, you really don't have to go past the front cover page if you didn't want it. You could just turn it over to an environmental professional. If it's low, you don't need to do anything. Medium low, medium, medium high is really going to need a file review. And high is just bad to the bone. Turn it over to an environmental professional, whether you have one in-house or not in-house. 
So if there's not any questions on this, let's look at a medium high. So let's go through the process just one more time. So first of all, I'm going to check my ad address, Salt Lake City, Utah. Cool. Client, Phase 1, Inc. It's a medium high. Got a concern right away. I want to see what that concern is. So first of all, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right site. Yes, it was mapped right. This is my site. I have a listing, number one, probably number two, but it looks like this building's kind of a strip mall. I don't see any red. I see green and yellow. So remember, yellow is we don't know if it's a concern or not. The definition of yellow, green, and red is at the bottom here in case you forget. So right away, uh, let's go out just a little further to the quarter mile. Again, we've got a whole lot of yellow and green and no real red, right? So I'm not super concerned. So the next thing I want to do is I want to look at the executive summary. And yes, my site is listed in multiple agency listings and multiple map IDs. So because it's multiple, I can't click right here and go to it. So I need to go to details number one, remember. But I want to look at some. I have fire insurance map coverage, which can give you a lot of history on your subject site. And you could order those from us if you wanted to know what the site was used for previously. Remember, after about 20 years ago, most people don't know what a site was used for. And that's because, as an average, commercial properties change hands about every seven years. So if that's the case, 20 years ago, we're already almost three owners <coughs> away. No one currently is going to remember what that property is used for. In this case, we have fire insurance map coverage that may go all back all the way to 1884. Excuse me, and you'd like to know what this site's used for. So we've got the radon zone. Soil type, and we got 150 hits or listings or occurrences on our maps. So let's go back. Let's look at the one mile radius map and get the whole picture in. And we see, again, it's all yellow and green. So I'm not super concerned. And it is medium high. So let's, let's go and see why this thing's medium high. So we're going to go down to map ID 1. We're going to see why this is high. Hmm. So the first thing is our property has an air permit. Does anyone know what an air permit's for? Someone tell me what an air permit is for. Anyone? Look, even if you have the wrong answer, it won't be an embarrassment. What do people get air permits for? Why are they required to get air permits? 
Okay. Basically, an air permit is a license to release hazardous materials into the air, specifically volatile organic chemicals. That is why um, you get an air permit, because the government is trying to regulate the amount of hazardous materials that go in the air for smog reasons, not for health reasons, for smog reasons. So this company, our subject site, Weir Specialty Pumps dash rubber engineering, literally has an air permit to release volatile organic chemicals into the air. They probably have a paint spray booth or something like that where they're using a lot of solvents. Solvents are volatile organic chemicals. This is one of the reasons it's bad because it's a medium high because they handle hazardous materials. Air Utah, same thing. Operating permit for air. Earns, they've reported an unknown amount of hydraulic oil and water was released into a storm drain. So urns is a spill report. Remember, you can go find where the urns definition is, right, all the way at the end of this report. On the record sources searched will give you a definition of what urns is. But it's basically spills. And they've had a spill in June 25th, 2018. Well, that concerns me. It should concern you. Okay. So still, air emissions classification, compliance activity, enforcement, formal enforcement action. They have a NPDES permit. That's a, basically a national pollution discharge permit into the storm sewer. So they do, and RICRA, so they handle hazardous materials, dispose of hazardous materials, and dispose of hazardous materials in their sewer. So that's concerning, and that's why it's a medium high. Wow, they've got a million, million listed listings here, especially for emissions, air emissions, spills, manufacturing. It just goes on and on. And they have some compliance issues back in the other thing we looked at. And that's telling me their housekeeping isn't great. So you really need to have someone do probably a phase one. Again, this should be turned over to a environmental professional. But let's go ahead and look at what the uh, medium high says. And it says the action is, have an environmental professional review the listings in the lender check report and determine the next step. And they're going to determine whether a file review, a site inspection, or a full phase one is going to be necessary for this site based on these listings. But you may have an alternative of not having to do a full phase one if an environmental professional thinks it can relieve all these concerns just on a file inspection or a site inspection. And that's fully legitimate. Remember, any environmental professional, environmental firm you use should have a million dollars of environmental errors and emissions insurance or professional liability. Now, a lot of firms have environmental professional liability. <laughs> if the insurance certificate doesn't state environmental, they may not be covered for environmental. And so all their environmental work isn't covered. It's worthless to you. 
This is environmental. Remember that. Check their insurance certificates. We have $2 million of environmental errors and emissions professional liability insurance on everything we do. So, very easy to get around, very easy to know your next step actions. We could go into more detail on interpreting some of these things, but most people don't want to really deal with that. This is designed to, this report's designed to be easy to use, quick to make decisions, and of high enough quality to go right in to your file. So you've reviewed. Now, let's say, according to the FDIC, you're supposed to review the environmental of every one of your loans once yearly. Run one of these reports. We also have the lender check too, which is a lesser screen, but it's just the subject cited immediately adjacent, whereas this goes out to a mile. That's good enough to fulfill staying up on the environmental. And we can automatically set your whole loan portfolio to getting checks. And we'll only uh, notify you when one of these risk levels change. Very inexpensive, very quick to do. You should think about doing that for your loan portfolios to keep abreast of everything that's going on, especially strip malls. You know, strip malls, you know, ones that never had a dry cleaner may end up having a dry cleaner, and they still use the same, uh, a lot of times still use the same PCE per chloroethylene or perk in their solvents for their dry cleaning fluids that cause all the problems. So very easy to get around. The lender checks, very uh, easy to use. And keep in mind, you can always email me, text me, ask me any question. I will tell you what these are, what's going on on your site, and help you interpret any one of these reports anytime if you're a client. In fact, even if you're not a client and you get a phase one or a phase two from somebody and you just don't know if they their conclusions and recommendations are correct or make sense, let me look at them. I've been in this business since 1985. So I have a little bit of background. I don't know it all, but I love helping people and help them through their problems. So Give me a call. So is there any questions on using the lender check, how easy it is to get around? And do you want any, got any questions? You want any more detail? Let me know. So everybody fine with this so far? I think we're pretty much done. We've seen a low, medium high, and a high we could do a medium or a medium low, but it's really pretty much the same basics. If you go to potential risk, you've got what medium low gives you. And it basically says on medium low that Action is have an environmental professional review the listing. So you're not doing anything else. It's just telling you, hey, there could be a problem here. Medium is, again, you may have to do a next step action, but it's probably only a file review or historical review of the listings. Whereas a medium high is, Man, it could go all the way to phase one. In a high is, you really got to do a phase one. And so this chart, I would print out this chart if you review a lot of these and just keep it beside you. And then really, if you don't want to know the exact reason something is the way it is, why it is a high or medium high, you don't have to be an environmental professional. You just have to have one that you can call up and talk to it real quick. Okay, so if there isn't any other questions, I'm pretty much done.
Our lender check is the most user-friendly, easiest to use, most detailed, and has a lot of report, a lot, lot of information. It's perfect to give to an environmental professional who's doing a phase one. Also, checking the results of a phase one. Let's say your client comes to you with a phase one that was done six months ago. Run a lender check on it. See if, number one, anything's changed. And number two, did they catch everything? Slam dunk, $74. It's $74 worth of insurance, basically. So please give us a try. If you're not our client, we'd love to have you. If you'd love this talk to anybody else, let me know. And that's really it for today. Anyone have any questions or anything? Matthew, you're very welcome. I hope that was detailed enough. I, I really didn't go into super detail on the, uh, 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 you know, on, on, on the environmental side, but I don't think you need to. I mean, this report does it all. The logarithms that come up with the low to high were all done by environmental professionals. And uh, they were great. We can alter them a little bit to fit whatever your company, bank's policy, environmental policy is. It's no problem. So if you ever have a question or anything, my extension is 1005. Give me a call. Thank you very much, and uh, if I haven't got any other questions, have a very, very good afternoon, everybody. Thank you.